The average 12 gauge slug is generally 435 grains. That's what it looks like. Seismics 12 gauge slug is 1093. Huge difference. That's what we're gonna talk about next. Seismics take on the 12 gauge. The first slug you're gonna see is a Remington law enforcement. It's a uh, 1,560 feet per second slug followed by the, um, and I'll give a quick pause, followed by the 1,093 grainer uh, by Seismic. It is noticeably different. For those uh, not familiar with seismic ammo, this isn't their first rodeo. They stepped into their arena a couple years ago, uh, introducing a 185 grain nine millimeter round. Not 45, not 40, nine millimeter round. And a lot of people said at that particular time, well, just run a 185, 45 or a 185 um, or close to it, 180, uh, 40. It's a different impulse. Uh, KFC doesn't tell me what their secret ingredient is and seismic doesn't either. <clears throat> but they're producing with that particular round a 0.75 expansion out of a G19 barrel and above. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, if you go lower than that, they don't recommend it for subcompacts because you won't get a uh, full expansion. Now, out of a PCC running an eight inch barrel or a little bit longer, you're gonna get increased velocity. So you're looking at about 1100 to 1150 feet per second. Whereas out of these handguns, you're right at 1050. 1050 seems to be something that um, kind of correlates so far from um, the nine millimeter round and to this round as well, because this um, 1093 grain 12 gauge round is doing 1050 out of an 18 inch barrel gun. They say the recoil impulse is that of like a waterfowl load or a turkey load, something in a three inch magnum category. Um, I'm sure you're not going to go run 50 rounds consecutive of this loadout and feel good about your, your just physical being at that moment. Um, but the devastation of what this round is bringing is pretty amazing. They've already had it uh, utilized in law enforcement uh, case on an engine block. Uh, ballistic gelatin pretty much explodes uh, as soon as this round hits it. Uh, this is a this is a thousand grains. This is a thousand. This is like throwing a dump truck at your adversary um, downrange uh, in a, in as, as as fast as you possibly can. I think we know twelve gauge rounds uh, can be shot <clears throat> further than a hundred yards, and and generally the rounds that I've been running are Hornady. Uh, they got a two thousand feet per second twelve gauge round. Uh, looks like a little red missile. Uh, then they got uh, Federal is what I really uh, like, which is 1650. So that's where my comparison is going to come from when I compare this particular round uh, to it. I think when we look at most altercations, uh, I would say that most altercations are 100 and in, 50 and in de uh, definitely. And then, of course, it's this particular round, uh, I think, is going to shine within that 100 to 50 I think 50 and in is going to just be completely devastating. Uh, 25 and in, I think between barriers, any type of mediums that you're dealing with are going to be gone. Um, interestingly, on a side note, um, nowadays plates actually hold a rating uh, for 12 gauge, meaning if you're going to have a level four style pl plate based on NIJ, um, there's two rounds that are gonna be added, uh, not only uh, based on 30-06 running 180 grains, well, that makes sense, it's a really fast round, but on it, on most plates that are level four rated, it's a point, um, uh, the SOCOM uh, 458 round, I believe. Um, I don't know if, if I got that correct. Um, or a 458 round, I think I think I got it correct. Uh, and the next one's a 12 gauge round. So, and that's one, just one round. It's gonna be able to stop one round. So I don't know exactly what this round would do because you're upping the amount of grains. And like I said, once you get that bullet up to speed, it can be completely devastating. I do know that I've shot um, ballistic uh, uh, material before, like windows, and it stopped AK armor piercing, it stopped uh, AR armor piercing. But the one round that shocked me that went through that ballistic window was a 12 gauge round and it hit the target on the other side. So I think all that this is gonna do is bring more devastation. So I'm really interested in, um, 
in utilizing it. Of course, I've got, like I said, I've got pumps and I've got semi-autos and they're all ported, so I'm gonna get a little bit different results as far as recoil goes. But um, definitely something to take a look at with this new round and see what it see see what you might need to utilize it for, especially if you know we're hunting anything from the Jurassic Park side of the house. I think you're gonna be good. Or Cape Buffalo. Or cement truck. Not really sure. So this is a seismic uh, 1093 grainer. We've got a few of them in here. You definitely know it. No getting away from it. So let's talk about this round for a second. Yesterday I filmed the inside portion and then of course uh, today, it's actually a beautiful day out here. We've had uh, snow up in the mountains and high winds for pretty much two weeks now. So I think this is the first time I've seen sun. But I came out here, I wanted to see what this round was gonna do. So the first thing I did this morning was I got on my table, benched my gun, uh, shot my rounds. I normally zero slightly high at 50 did a quick confirmation of my normal rounds at 25 and then I followed it up with one of the seismic rounds. The first thing that you notice is that you're going to need to have a dedicated uh, gun to this round. It's got its own specific zero that you're going to have to uh, work with whether you like a 25 or a 50 or something of that nature. Uh, so I was about a foot and a half low from my original rounds and that makes sense. It's a slower round. You're doing about 1050 vice 1600 feet per second. As long as you dedicate the zero to that gun, you're going to be fine. Uh, I'm sure you could go to 150 uh, with this particular round, which would probably be, you know, holding over the target. At 100, I'm holding generally neck, and I'm not worried about it. You know, good results. So first of all, you're going to have to have a dedicated zero to that particular gun. You're not going to be able to swap the rounds in and out real quick without doing some type of uh, zero change. The other thing that you're gonna to have to consider, especially if you're shooting steel is, I really wouldn't recommend shooting steel 50 and in. And the reason why is most slugs, as they go into a target, just like any other projectile, they'll start to frag, uh, they expand, and then of course the rest of the fragmentation goes down to the ground line. This round's a little bit different because it has so much back end to it. So by the time that slug, normal slug, hits a piece of steel, and I'm running 3 8 inch uh, steel by steel ops, so when that normally goes in, there's not much left going into the ground, um, fragmentation wise. It's being split apart pretty well. But this thing is a little different. This thing, I think, is a very mission specific round. If you had to do something that had um, or required major penetration uh, as far as, uh, you know, if you had to put down a freaking bison or a Cape Buffalo, I would not hesitate to do it with this particular round. If you had to shoot into an engine block of a car, we kind of talked about it yesterday, uh, the amount of energy transferred to that target is going to be unreal. What I would be concerned about is if your backdrop in this particular case is not safe, you have a high uh, likelihood of over penetration. So if you're rocking this thing 25 and in and you, and you go to end up engaging somebody, you're gonna probably over penetrate uh, with this particular round. I think it's extremely unique. I think the fact that a company has taken something that's been around for an extremely long period of time, like the 12 gauge, like the standard rounds, and just jacked it up on steroids uh, for certain missions, I can really see how this round uh, would really shine. In, in the Coast Guard, many years ago, we were using 50s to stop um, uh, small boat engines and stuff like that, you know, regular uh, Yamaha or, or a Merc 300s and stuff like that to basically disable the boat. And this would be done from a helicopter. And the shots were pretty close. They were like, you know, it's a downward angle, 25 and in. I'll tell you what, I would have no hesitation. I guarantee you throw this into the engine block of a Yamaha um, and uh, that boat's gonna stop. So as far as engines and vehicles and things of that nature, I think this is definitely a great attribute. And I think it's awesome that a company like Seismic is, is, is truly pushing the limits on what a round or, or, or what we could actually do with this type of ammunition.